All right, Happy New Year. You know, all of you are going to spend a lot of time together over the next eight weeks, and some of you will become into teams and so on and so forth, okay? So my recommendation is why don't you just take one second to wish Happy New Year in person to the person sitting next to you. Just wish each other Happy New Year. 2017 should be one of the best years of your life till date, right? You can wish the person next to you Happy New Year, all right? Good stuff. So Anand has been kind enough to give me, uh, you know, uh, uh, tell you a little bit about myself. Okay, so thanks Anand for that. What we'll now do is, um, once we get the presentation up on the screen. Okay, so what I'll do is, first of all, I'll start with the course introduction. Okay, so you understand what this course is going to be about. And I'm, and I'm, I'm also going to share with you um, some of the resources that we'll use in this course, okay? So, if you move, we'll just get the logistics a little bit streamed down. All right, you know, the first thing when you get started on anything is to ask yourself the question, why do I need to do this? Why? You're going to spend eight weeks. Some of you will do electives, some of you will do, um, um, you know, minors, some of you PhD, some BTEC, some MTech. Why do I want to do this? Why now? So I'll explain my points of view about that, okay? Second is I'll tell you about how the course structure is going to look like and how does it fit into the entire life cycle of a startup, okay? So what does the course structure look like? And third, I'll talk to you a little bit about how we're going to work together for the next eight weeks till 18th of February, okay? So that will be the course introduction so that all of you are clear what to expect in the next eight weeks, okay? Make sense? All right, let's go to the next one. Let's start with why. Why are you, if you have a compelling why, if you are clear, why do I need to do this, okay? You will then give the right kind of quality, attention and time that it deserves. Because all of you are busy, you've got many courses, many this thing. So why do you want to do this as an elective, minor, whatever, okay? So I will share a few thoughts and then I'll ask you, why do you want to do this? Why are you in this course first of all, okay? So I've tried to put together a few whys. Why should you and why you do be interested in this course, okay? See if it makes sense. This is marketing for entrepreneurs. All right, I think the first why, okay? The first why is that the timing for the whole startup, okay? environment, the ecosystem, is, is right. See, when I passed up IIT Karakpur and all, no, not many people actually went into their own businesses. But if you look at what's happening in the last one or two years, okay, the government is pushing programs like Startup India. Everybody heard about Startup India? Yes? Everybody heard about Digital India, Startup India, you know, uh, um, um, that... Uh, NASCOM is the National Software Committee, you know, and they have also announced a program to mentor 10,000 startups, okay? Because of all of that, India today <coughs> is, a, is almost the third most active startup hub in the world. The first is US, second is UK, and you can see the numbers there. Used to be Israel, which is very, very strong. Now it is India. So India in the last year had 10,000 startups. And about 5,000 of them, 4,700 were tech startups. And you guys are ITNs. Okay? So if anybody has to do a tech startup, it should, logically it should be you. So first point is that the timing is right. Okay? And the ecosystem is building. There are a lot of things which are happening which I'll talk to you later on. You know, funding, IP protection, legal protection, and so on. If you go to the next one, the timing is right. If you look at some of the India success story, next, next slide. Okay. So I've, what I've just pulled out from here, is some of the unicorns. Anybody knows what a unicorn is? It's a billion dollar valuation. Okay, it's a billion dollar valuation. Startups which went for a billion dollar. And it shows how long different startups took, took to hit um, a billion dollar startup. Right at the bottom is Infosys. Everybody knows Infosys? How many years did it take? You can read it there. Almost 20 years, right? 
If you look at Just Dial, okay, it took 17 years. When it changed many times. If you look at, you know, Paytm, which started as 197, okay, it took whatever number of years because then it pivoted into. But if you look at Hike, look at what's happening now. Look at Hike. Many of you use Hike, right? Hike hit a billion dollar in what? Just a few years' time. So by the time you finish the IT course, this guy's a billion dollar. Okay, so the timing is right. Success stories are there. Make sense? That's the rosy side. But it's not all rosy, right? <laughs> Let's go to the next slide. Now, unfortunately, even in US, where it's much easier to do business, okay, much easier the ecosystem exists. Okay, Silicon Valley has the ecosystem. In East Coast, you know, around MIT and Harvard and Boston, New England area, there's a lot of ecosystem. 95, there's Harvard research. You know, Sikhar Ghas is a Harvard um, professor who did a research that 95% of the startup fail to meet their own projections. Okay, and 65%, about two thirds of them don't even return how much money they have borrowed from this thing. So it's not easy. Okay, it's not easy. The rewards are huge, but it's not easy. So you have to be, have a more disciplined approach and it's not for everybody. There are many dropouts along the way. If you go to the next slide. Also, the journey is long. It's a long journey, okay? Facebook started when? 2007. He was in Harvard dorm in 2007. Bill Gates started with basic, then he went to DOS. Then DOS, he put the graphic interface, went to Windows. Steve Jobs went to Apple, went to Next, came back to Apple, and then it took so long, you know, to. So the journey is long. This is the Flipkart journey. If you look at the data of last year, Flipkart revenue is 15,000 crores, starting in 2007. Last year was 15,000 crores. They have taken 21,000 from the market, 21,000 crore, and they have still lost 5,000 crores. So last year, 2016, if you read the papers, they sold 15,000 crores, they lost 5,000 crores, and They've taken 21,000 crores investor and investor money. And this is in the newspaper today. So journey is long. The prices are huge. But it's tough. And the journey is long. So it needs a lot of, okay. Go to the next slide. Then the question comes, why do startups fail? There will be, I will show you later on, that I, I've curated, I've collected a set of reading mat matter, which is very relevant for you, I think, and a, a, a collection of videos which you can go through, and we'll hand over everything to you by the end of this class, so you know all the readings and all the videos that you have to go through um, for your own benefit, okay? This is a Fortune article. Okay, they, they, they interviewed a lot of startup founders, some of whom have succeeded and some who have failed, and it's listed, why do startups fail? Okay, the biggest reason for startup failure, 42% of the startups failed because they built a product, very good products, which nobody wanted. Great engineer, build great products, but nobody wants them. If you look at the top 10 reasons, you can't read it probably in this slide, okay? But if you look at the top 10 reasons, Seven out of the top 10 reasons relate to the market. They're the wrong product, they chose the, they're chasing the wrong customer, the pricing was wrong, the timing was wrong, they're, you know, they're beaten by competition and so on and so forth. Three of them related to the team or cash or business model. Seven of them related to not understanding the marketplace. And this, I'll, this will be part, this is the first reading. I mean, all of you will get it in your folders. Make sense so far? Comments, questions? Okay, let's move on. So I just tried to explain to you that if you have the fire of entrepreneurship burning, okay, you have to be aware of the good, which is huge, the bad, which is high risk, Long journey 
and the ugly. Getting the marketing wrong, getting, we misreading the market, not doing enough with the customers. Okay? So this is a little bit of background and you may have your own reasons for attending this class. Okay? Let's move on. So I talked about the why. So what will you get in this class? Okay, remember it's just an eight-week cl class, it's just a capsule. So what we'll try and talk a little about is how to discover customers, discover a customer need. It doesn't start with the, the, the I'll talk to you about it in the next class. Okay, the worst position to start off with for a startup is I have an idea. That's the most dangerous ki mera paas ek idea hai. Or, I'm a computer science engineer who has a computer ka product. Banana hai. I'm an engineer in this thing, I have to do something on VLSI, electrical engineering. I'm a civil engineer, I have to do something on fabric prefabs. Very, very, very dangerous. I have an idea, very dangerous. I'll talk about it in the next class. All that matters, what doesn't matter at all, is what you think. The only thing that matters is what the customer thinks. And that takes you in the area of customer discovery. Who's the customer? What is his need? And so on and so forth. Okay? And it needs very different skill sets that you need. Okay? In term, hi Raj. Let me just um, introduce you to Professor Raj Jaswa. He's a, he is, you know, one of the founding professors. He's based in the US and he comes here to take some classes. He will take the class immediately after this, which is technology, this thing. Uh, technology venture creation. Uh, guys, I'd just like to give uh, uh, a round of applause to Professor Raj. Good to have you. Just getting started. Just, okay. So I explained to you the why. Now I'm going to talk a little bit about the what. So discover the customer needs. I'll talk a little bit about how do you, def how do you create and define a customer value. And then how do you deliver that to the market. Okay. So that you can start up, scale up, and then you can succeed. All right? Let's go to the next one. Now, hi, how? So I talked about the why. Why you do be, you know, so, you know, what could be a good reason for you to be in this class. I talked to you a little bit about the what, and I'm going to talk about the timetable in a while. I'm not going to talk to you about little about how do you want to run this class, OK? Guys, the first thing is that it needs to be engagement. This is not a lecture. This is not going to be a lecture, OK? Because in entrepreneurship, there are no rules, there are no laws, there are not thousand year old empirical, you know, hundred year old empirical theories, OK? In entrepreneurship, in, in, in electrical engineering, current flows from positive to negative. One plus one is always equal to two. In entrepreneurship, it could be anything. And therefore, there has to be a lot of engagement, and we will talk that. And most of the classes, about half of it will be my talking, about half of it will be you're doing, and there will be certain other activities, okay? So guys, there will be a lot of engagement. There are no exams. But what we'll do is we will have a midpoint presentation from each of you, from each of the teams, okay? And there'll be a final presentation. And I'll also outline what are the highlights that I'll be looking for for your presentations. So there's no exam, okay? But we will be laying out certain, uh, you know, um, certain ways of presenting and so on and so on. Make sense so far? Any questions? Questions, guys? Ladies? No questions? Okay, so far? All right, if we move to the next slide. All right, let me just take you through the timetable, okay? But before I get you to the, take you through the timetable, okay, I'm going to take you a little bit about what is the startup life cycle? Okay, because you will hear a lot of things about um, those of you who are already in the business of starting up, things like lean startup, business model canvas. You will hear about um, you know design thinking, rapid prototyping, agile development. So these are all tools and methodology. But how does it all fit in? Okay, into the startup life cycle. Okay, so. This is actually an extract from a couple of people. One is from INSEAD and one is from, um, from um, I think, Maryland or something, and it's a Harvard paper. So this does a very good job of hi uh, highlighting the four steps okay, 
um, of a startup journey, four or five steps, and then different tools. Okay, now I'm not, we, we'll not have the time to get into all the tools, but I want you to understand the essence of um, what are the steps of a startup, what are the steps of a journey. The first thing is insights. Whose insights? It's not my insight. It's the insights, a wow, something which you see outside in the IT campus, in Hiranandani, in your hometown, in your home locality, and you look at something and you say, oh, wow. Wow. That's an insight. I can do something about it. So how do you get that insight? So we'll talk about that, and that takes you into creativity, innovation, and, and so on and so forth. The second thing is, one if, once you've gotten wow, then how do you then define a problem around it? It's like cash. Cash, the blind people could get, understand what's happening around them. Cash, the deaf people could get some sensory, they can't hear, but they get, get to hear something. Gosh, I could go do something um, faster or better or cheaper. And then you define a problem, and then you get into problems and solution. And that's, that's why have, there are different methodology around design thinking and lean starting up and all of that. Okay? But I'll take you more through the essence of it versus the mechanics of different kinds of methodologies. Okay? And then once you have done the customer discovery and you have got a, a sort of, sort of a, a solution, okay, then how do create a business model and their methodology like business model canvas and so on and so forth okay and then once you've got a business model and then you start scaling up you've got your first few customers you've got your first few revenues you've got you know you've got a good idea a proven idea and so on now you need to scale up how do you scale up and I'm going to touch on each of those okay so this is how the timetable is laid out if you just go to the next slide so we started today so today is the first class all of this will be given out to you in your folders. All of you have, all of, you'll have a folder by the end of the class, you know, with all the reading and so on. The way you can see is all the topics, class-wise, you'll get to see all the reading material, which I've curated, which means I've chosen. It's all available online, and we'll get the permission to give you some handouts. And there are some chosen videos. Okay, and I show you some books which you can read if you want to read a book. Okay? So today's class is all about introduction, course overview, evolution of marketing, team formation. We'll do a couple of exercises today. Where's the clock? Ah, 7.54, okay, 5.54. Um, why startups fail? I showed you that in the first, cha uh, first chart, and you'll get the, the actual for fortune handout, so you can read it as to why startups fail. And then I'm going to show a video on, can you learn entrepreneurship? Is it born, or can it be taught? I mean, there are people who have done an outstanding job. Raj himself is one of them. Okay? But can it be replicated? Okay? Can it be taught? And so we'll hear a little bit about that. Make sense so far, guys? Make sense? Questions? Questions? Okay, so far? All right, let's move on. So, and then we have some presentations, as you can see that. And then we we'll move to the next, next page, next slide. Yeah, and then there are some more topics. So it will take you through the entire startup life cycle. Okay, and, but I will highlight the points relating to the market, touching the customer because this is a course of marketing. Okay, this is not really a full startup course. Okay, let's move on. All right, a little bit of housekeeping. Let's move on. All right, my contact uh, name, um, um, this, will be on, this presentation will be on Moodle. So you can note down my contact details. I've got an IT email, but I've also got a Gmail. You can mail me on Gmail. I can see it on my phone. I can respond faster. Okay. Um, um, Dr. Aparna is going to create a WhatsApp group for all of you, me, Shakti, and Dr. Aparna. Okay. Um, please, no forwards and, and no good morning, good afternoons. Okay. <laughs> this WhatsApp group is related to the course. Okay. So handouts and submissions. All of you, all the teams will get a USB drive, which will have all the reading. You'll have all the, um, um, you know, the videos, okay, submissions. I would expect that um, there are some customer interviews of which you take pictures or audio recordings or video recordings. And I would like the, you to put all of them into, um, into that stick so that, you know, we can have a look at it. Everybody has a smartphone with a camera. Anybody doesn't have a smartphone without a camera? Um, with a camera? 
everybody has a smartphone right got it so every kind of customer touch points to be uh, pictured audioed or videoed and put it on the stick this will be a good frame of reference for you and then you can have a look at it all right um, we'll also give you the folders by the end of the class today and a lot of focus will be on doing you cannot learn swimming reading a manual you cannot be a taekwondo black belt looking at a manual or reading a book you have to get beaten up or you have to get your feet wet to be a black belt my daughter took 10 years to be a black belt okay so we will do a lot of work in the next eight weeks time okay and is eight weeks a long time to do a startup yes or no yes or no can you actually by the end of eight weeks have something up what do you think how many of you say think yes two three uh, let me give you a case study uh, which I read about. Uh, uh, um, so this is called Buffer. I don't know whether Raj uses Buffer. So Buffer is where uh, is a tool where you can actually queue up. Anybody knows about Buffer? Buffer.com. So you see, if you want to post at certain times of the day, Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, and so on and so forth, okay, but you don't want to do it at that time, you can actually put it on Buffer. And then Buffer will post it on that social media whichever you choose, okay, at a certain time, okay. So this was started in 2010, and what these guys did was just created a landed pa landing page, which I'll talk to you about how to, you know, growth, when I talk about growth hacking and everything, I'll talk a little bit about how you can, like, you know, really speed up, the ex you know, accelerate your startup. So what they did was they put a landing page. A landing page is just a simple page, which says, this is our concept, do you like it? And they tweeted it. And they got some response, okay, on the landing page. They did not need millions of thousands. They just got a few hundred. But that was enough to say, okay, probably there's something in it. Then they did a modified landing page two, three days later and said, will you pay for it? Zero dollars, five dollars, twenty dollars. And a few people said yes. Most people said no. They put the first tool, because the tool itself took one or two weeks to develop. And uh, apparently, they put the first tool up in, in, uh, on, on, on the net in seven or ten days' time. So they did the customer discovery through a landing page, and they put the first tool up. Okay, um, I think the first nine months it took them hundred thousand users in nine months. Day four they had the first registration, and I think day something they got the first paid customer. You can look it up in the net. Today they have three million. If you go to buffer.com, they have got three million. So they went from concept to customer discovery to launch, and then this, and they started with just Twitter, okay, free. But they went to freemium. They said, you know, one account, ten tweets, only Twitter, free. But if you want multiple, you know, multiple tweets, hundred, you know, and then multiple this thing, you have to pay. Okay, so you can, and then you know, Pebble Kickstarter and so on and so forth. You can actually put up your concept on the net and see if you can collect money. Okay, so there's absolutely no reason why some of you cannot actually put something up on the net and see if you can get either some early money or some, some registration or something, because then you're in business. And if you can get one or two paid customers, man, you are like, you're in business. So think about whether you can actually do startups in eight weeks. In the startup world, okay, it's about hours and days. It's not about months and years. Okay? All right, let's move on. So let's start with engineering and marketing. All of you are engineering students. How many of you like, like marketing? How many of you think marketing is important? Okay, a few hands. How many of you like to do marketing yourself? Okay, some of you. Others, others want to what? You guys want to delegate, hire someone else or what? Delegate. Hi oh, you'll do your own. All right, let's, let's move on. Simple, simple test, okay? How many of, there are two pictures here. How many of you will actually vote for the first picture? Raise your hands. 
You have to choose one, huh, guys? <laughs> okay? How many of you will choose, how many will you pick for the right, right hand? I mean, I mean the right picture. How many of you will choose the right picture? Some of you have not raised your hands at all. You will go for the right hand. Why? <laughs> okay, fair enough. <laughs> Margin of error, right? All right, guys, think. So what the point I was trying to make is, if you think logically, sequentially using your left brain, one plus one is always equal to two. In engineering, one plus one is always equal to two. Current always from, from positive to negative. Rarely will it go ulta. Okay. But in entrepreneurship, in especially in marketing, okay, there are not too many rules out there. Okay, and the competencies that you need to develop are competencies we may not get from your engineering education. Okay, so if you go to the next one, okay. On the left side, you'll get a lot of, the left brain is what is logical, sequential, rational, analytical, and classic engineering. But if you really want to do a good job, and if you're doing a hardcore um, 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 technical startup and, and, and sell a technology product, I think you can manage with the left brain. But if you really want to do a right brain, uh, you know, you need to develop a lot of traits, okay? So, for example, if you look at design thinking, etc. Okay, you actually have to empathize with your customers. Everybody knows about the Airbnb, what happened to the Airbnb guys? Anybody, everybody knows about Airbnb? You know? Like, it's like oil. It's the global version of oil, right, those guys. So when those two guys started off, um, when those two guys started off, you know, they're not getting too many lists, they're not getting too many, um, 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 people who are, you know, trying to book, rent a place through Airbnb. They also growth hack their way through Craigslist and all, which is a separate story, but they're still not getting enough. And one of the things, so they're trying to fix the, you know, they're trying to do a lot of growth hacking by, you know, piling on to Craigslist and so on, which I'll talk about later. But one of the suggestions they got was that, why don't you guys just go and spend some time with your customers in New York and ask why they are not kind of, um, um, booking a room through Airbnb. And when they went there and talked to some of their customers, okay, one of the things that they realized was that the pictures that were being posted, the people who were trying to rent their homes, they are posting pictures, very poor quality pictures, but, you know, from, you know, kind of, and these are like early years, bad quality smartphones and so on and so forth. So nobody, the users who wanted to book a, uh, place could not actually make out is this a good place or a bad place where the pictures are so bad and that field work gave them an experience that wow we need some good pictures so today if you look at the Airbnb or the OYO um, rooms you know the pictures are very nice but they could not have got this insight unless they empathize with their customers so this whole process of engagement dialoguing empathy etc okay um, so I was mentoring, I just, and I'm, I'm talking about now teams, live teams in IIT. So I was, I was um, um, I'm mentoring or work, spending some time with someone who is trying to do something for the deaf, deaf people, okay? And they're trying to do surveys and all. And what I suggested to them, and I, then I think they are doing a very good job now, is that why don't you empathize by experiencing deafness? You can experience deafness, you know, you can put earplugs and then experience deafness and then you understand what are the needs of a deaf. You have empathized with the deafness. There are some people, one other team was trying to do something for the blind. You don't have to interview blind people, you interview, you do surveys and all, but you can experience blindness, no. You can just tie up your this thing and leave for one hour, of, you know, two hours or half an hour or something and you experience blindness. That is empathic. Because you're experiencing what the customer experience is. And, if, and, and, and I'll give you some case studies, some, some guys I'm working with and so on and so forth. So these are all right brain activities, where emotions and, and so on and so forth. When I talk to you about customer needs and wants, you will find that the brilliant marketeers are always working more on the right brain, on the emotional needs or, or the needs of people versus just the technical features and the technical benefits, which works in some industries, but not all. And you make more money if you appeal to the higher needs, which we'll talk separately. Make sense? All right, let's move on. So I mean, we're now, now getting into the, this thing which I'm saying, 
even the best marketeers of the world have made mistakes. Okay, so companies like Coca-Cola, which is arguably one of the best marketeers, the Coke brand is one of the most uh, valuable, you know, top 10 valuable brands in the world, worth billions of dollars. And what happened was in 1985, I think some of you know this, in 1985, um, they were competing with Pepsi, and they did, a, and they were, you know, getting a lot of competition, and they wanted to relaunch Coke. So they want to do something called New Coke. And they did a lot of left brain surveys, a lot of customer interviews, and, and you know, two million interviews they did, and surveys, and blind tests, and everything. Very scientific, very logical. And in April of um, in 1985, they launched New Coke. And guess what happened? The sales went up or sales went down? Go to the next slide. The sales just collapsed. Because what they had forgotten was that a Coke drinker was extremely loyal to Coke. And they did not want their Coke to be changed. They wanted to compete with Pepsi, made it slightly sweeter, and so on and so forth. You know? And they formed, the users, the Americans, actually they formed associations to bring back the old Coke, the classic Coke. And in less than three months' time, they, the president went on, the president of Coke at that point in time went on TV and said, we are taking our, you know, they kept new Coke, but they brought back the classic Coke. It was seen as a, as, as, as a case study of, of, you know, you have to emote, because Coke did not understand the emotional factor of loyalty. You know, you become loyal to things, you become loyal to your phone, you become loyal to your device, you become loyal to your saris, or you become loyal to, you know, the taxi wala, or whatever. That loyalty is very difficult to overcome, and that's very, that's very right-brained, okay? So I'm just alerting you to the fact that as engineering students, you have some very, very strong core competencies. All of you are extremely intelligent and very, very strong in certain things. But to get into entrepreneurship, and especially when you're leading large organizations, you know, um, and you're becoming a bit of a visionary and so on, you have to develop other skill sets. And it, that will take you to your non-comfort zone. Okay, because you have to continuously talk to your employees, to investors, to shareholders, to your customers. And if you're not used to talking too much, and you're work, used to working by yourself, you'll be out of your comfort zone. Okay? So see this also as a richening experience, which kind of complements what you're learning in your engineering courses. Make sense? Make sense, guys? All right, let's move on. So now let's start into what is a startup? What is a startup? What's a startup? Hmm? Let's move to the next slide. Now, what's the difference between a small business and a startup? Anybody? I said that India had 10,000 startups. Do you know how many small businesses that are there? You can see, read the number there. There are about four crore small units, MSME. Government calls them micro, small, medium enterprise. Four crores, employing eight crore Indians. And they contribute how much to GDP? 42% of the GDP, uh, you know, 40% plus minus. 40% of exports comes from the SME sector. And these include all the SME sectors, the parlors, the Kirana stores, and the shops, and the bus, and the food carts, and all of these. And every day, thousands are coming and thousands are dying. But collectively, they're huge. They're huge, 42% of our GDP. But you must understand that there's a difference between a small business and a startup. There's a government definition of startup, which I'll show you, and you should be aware of that. Because if you register your company as a startup, you get some benefits. Okay, so go to the next slide. There's a government definition. The government definition of India is that it has to be less than five years, less than 25 crores, but it has to have a new process, a new technology, a new IP, okay, which then qualifies you to a startup, and then you can get certain tax benefits and so on. So if you're, any of you are setting up a company later on, try to register yourself as a startup company, because you get certain benefits, which is not today's discussion. 
okay i will come back to what is a startup in a while okay let's move to the next one what is marketing what's marketing guys selling the product okay absolutely advertising fantastic what else what else let's go to the next one so you know there is a big difference between the classical marketing which companies like procter and gamble or um, you know um, 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 nestle or colgate or the fmcg company or you know samsung or or lg which spend billions of dollars in advertising you know um, versus what you do in a startup and i'll talk that in a while the big marketing is very different from startup marketing okay and i'll explain that to you because you have to understand how does the whole startup life cycle goes um, the mba courses teaches a kind of marketing mba by definition is master of business administration but what happens if you don't have a business how do you apply your mba knowledge when you don't even have a business so when i go to spgen or iams or or nasimonji and something you know um, what mba courses teach out there is not applicable to when you're starting up it's start, it's applicable when you've already got a business but not when you're still trying to start up a business okay so i'll just talk that in one this is the, hold on so this is actually just go back this is actually a technical definition okay the technical definition basically means that you're exchanging value that your customers have something of value to you typically money and you are providing them with a product or a service so that's the technical definition but that's big marketing that's for coke that's for pepsi that's for nike that's for reebok that's for samsung that's for lg that's for general electric that's for boeing okay let's move on so now you come back to marketing for startups okay now i will take you through this because all of you have to make a decision that if you are going to do entrepreneurship are you going to start a small business one or two or three crore kind of business which stops out at one or two or three crore business which i call the billion paisa business or are you guys going to start a billion dollar business if you do an msme you'll probably end up with a billion paisa business which is a crore billion paisa is a crore you'll be thinking crores but you at you know if you really want to do startup and do some really disruptive and discontinuous stuff you need to think billion dollars you'll not get it on day 1 it'll take a few years to get there but you need to think that okay so this more left now if you look at customers and solutions or products okay and if you look at two axes one of which is called i know my customer and or i don't know my customer and one is i have a product and i don't have a product okay then you get some combinations Okay, just go to the next slide. So, if you know your, if you have a product, but you don't know your customer, can you think of an example, guys? Typically, many of you will do that. You will have a product, but I don't know who the customer is, and that's why many startups fail. Remember, I showed you the the Fortune survey, which says most product, most startups fail because they have a great product which nobody wants but on a broader sense what can also happen is this is a typical market entry this thing okay so you know uh, uh, mnc wants to enter the india market okay they have a product they've got a car or they've got a plane or they've got a tv or they've got a phone and they're entering the india market they know the solution but they don't know the customer and even with all the mighty muscles and research and everything some some mnc's get it right and some mnc's get it horribly wrong so if you look at across industries okay car industry if you look at the auto industry the top 3 in the world are general motors toyota volkswagen fiat those are the biggies in india they are almost very small players because they they had the good product but they did not understand the india market but on the other hand suzuki is the biggest in india but it's the 10th largest in the world but it's the biggest in india same thing across other sectors if you look at you know consumer durables 
LG and Samsung, the Koreans are doing very well because they understood the customer well. Philips, Sony, not so good, right? And so on across. You can look across, you know, quick service restaurants, which are doing well, which are not doing so well, okay? So remember, for you also, you can build a great product, so you know your solution and your product, but you have not found out your customer. So watch out for that. Even big MNCs get it wrong. It's not a, you know, I'm not quite passing any value judgments here. I'm just saying matter of facts. Let's move to the next one. What happens if you know the solution, if you know the customer? What's an example? You've got a solution and you've got it. So then you do a product upgrade. So in, in, a, in, a, in technology, what will that could be? It could be a Android update, right? You go from Marshmallow to Noga to whatever, Android 6 to Android 7. It could be Windows 8 to Windows 10. It could be one kind of shampoo to a better kind of shampoo. You know the product, you know the customer, you upgrade it and you work in a certain way. Make sense? Go to the next slide. What happens if you know the customer and you understand that he has a need, but you don't know the solution? That's classic product development, new product launch. So you've got, let's say, you know, you've got, you've got a phone, you, you know all the, you know, Apple knows all the Apple 6, Apple 5, Apple 6, they understand what are the ecosystem and so on and so forth. But, you know, they need to upgrade it maybe to an Apple 7 or whatever it is. So you do a classic new product launch. But that leaves one, which is the next one. Well, what happens if you don't know the customer, you don't know the solution? Can happen, no? There's no customer, there's no, what happens? Then what do you do? When Dropbox started, you know, they, you know Dropbox is quite a case study. They put a video up, right? We'll talk about separately, how to, how to get your first customer. So you don't have a product, you don't, but you have a burning desire to create a billion dollar business. Okay, that's when you start, that's where you get into the area of starting up. Because you have to find your customer, you have to do a little bit of finding of the customer, then you have to develop a little bit of product, then find a little bit more of the customer, do a little bit more about product development, a little bit more and more, and then you disrupt. And in my later classes, I will, I will show you examples, and then I'll encourage you to think about how you can disrupt existing players. If you have to create a billion dollar business, you have to disrupt a $10 billion business. How do you do that? It's a daunting task, huh? Okay, take some fire in the belly, right? I mean, so that's a startup. So go to the next slide. Thanks, Kamal. So what happens if you don't know your customer, you don't know your solution, and you don't have a business model in place? What happens? The risks are high or the risks are low? If you go to investor and say, you know, I'm doing some sort of a robot, but I'm not sure what the robotics is, and I'm not sure exactly what will be applied for, and don't have a business model to produce it, do you think the investor will give you money? Probably not. Oh, we have a team like that, actually, and they, you know, they got some funding and so on and so forth. Different story. So, so guys, the only way, okay, is doing this startup thing is, go to the next slide, is that you have to treat it like a experiment. You have to treat it like an engineering, engineering experiment. You have to make some hypothesis, and you have to keep testing them, and refining them, and testing them. And it could be as simple as, you know, I think the lame people want this. I think there are so many lame people in the world. I think, so you know, you're making a series of this thing. I think if I could give them, they will be better off. So make a series of hypotheses, which we'll talk about later on. And you experiment with all of them and see how many of them are right and how many of them are wrong. And that's why engineers can make very good, believe it or not, I think some of you have got pre-notions of what is marketing. Actually, engineers are very good at that. And you guys can actually do an experiment in a very structured, deliberate way. Find a little bit of the customer, develop a little bit of solution, find a little bit more, develop a little bit more solution, and keep moving together. Till you have a solution which meets some customer's need. And then you scale it up. So go slowly, find a solution, 
after a lot of experimentation for a few customers and then scale the hell out of it. So you go and then when you hit it, then you start scaling up, which is a different ball game, okay? Whereas if you go with a small business where the, there are, you know, one million other Kirana shops and one million other, you know, hair parlors and 100,000 food trucks and, you know, 10,000 websites and 5,000 applications, you can only go like this, like this, like this. But if you do something which is really unique, you can go like this, find your first few customers, find your solution and then explode. Make sense? And that goes, takes you in the area of growth hacking and so on. So we're going to talk about that, okay? Engineers, by the way, go to the next slide. And, and we'll, we'll talk this. So marketing for startups, I don't know what is in your mind it is, you know, marketing is equal to advertising, some of you said selling, some of, marketing is nothing. It touches every point. It got, cuts right through the journey cycle, trying to find out from, about your customers, first few customers, find out their needs, do something for them, go back to the market, Test your hypothesis, test your product, improve upon it, and keep going. So marketing cuts across in the context of startup. It goes through the entire life cycle. It's not just selling, it's not just advertising, it's just branding, it's not just pricing, and it's not just repairs or maintenance. Make sense? So it cuts through all of that. And I'll talk that in a while. All right, let's move on. By the way, engineers have always been brilliant marketeers, or they have enabled a lot of marketing. And you'll find that every time there has been an engineering discontinuity through history, there has been marketeers have very quickly taken advantage of it, very quickly. So let's, I'll just show you some pictures very quickly. Pyramids was an engineering marvel, but Egypt, the pharaohs, okay, used this to market their country and themselves. Okay, move to the next one, Re recent history, printing press, everybody knows that, Gutenberg? 1450, he invented the press, the printing press. As soon as the press started, okay, that enabled a whole string of new marketing. Go to the next slide. So you see all of these? This is about 100 years old, I think. Gillette, shaving cream, shaving, right? So as soon as the printing press came, people started printing, and suddenly you can send the flyers all over. Next one. This is about camel. This is one of the early ones where, you know, the advertising line was about even doctors have camels. Today, I think, you know, it's completely wrong, right? Go to the next one. This is the first kind of the printed manual for the locomotive. Engineering, discovery, marketing riding on his back. Next, another one example. Go to the next one. Remember Graham Bell? Hello. And what did it give rise to? The telephone? Telemarketing, right? You still have it. You still get calls in spite of DNDs, right? As soon as the phone came, the telemarketing started. Correct? Move on. Marconi, remember that? Radio. What happens when the radio came up? Radio jingle. Washington, you know, this, this, you know, the, the All India radio and so on and so forth. Go to the next one. So if you look at the Third Reich broadcasting jingle, you know, the whole nation was roused to war by that Third Reich, you know, the, what the Nazis had that, you know, the warlike jingle, and we had our own All India jingle. Go to the next one. Look at this. This is television, the first, first television, you know, John Lager and, and Philo Frame. Um, yeah, just move on. And then it's what we call serial today. Everybody watches serials, right? Television serials. It was, used to be called soap operas. You know why is it called soap operas? Anybody heard the term called soap opera? Because a company called Procter & Gamble started using that TV for advertising soap called Ivory and so on. So before every serial, there was an Ivory ad or something. That's why it was called soap opera, which comes on TV. Today also we are carrying on. So every time you're watching a serial, there are 1,000 advertisements you have to sit through. So TV came, soap opera came. Okay, and today we call it serials. Go to the next one. Anybody remember this page? Computer science, how many computer science students are here? You guys should be knowing it. None? Okay. This is the first ever page that Tim Berners-Lee put it up from CERN. Okay, the first ever page that actually got put up on the web. And what happened as soon as the internet came? Okay, with, with, with you know, a structured page structure, HTML and everything came, go to the next one. All these things came, all of this came. Right? 
And today, if you look at startup marketing, okay, go to the next one. Growth hacking. How many of you are familiar with growth hacking and so on? It's hacking is not, this is not bad hacking, huh? this is not about like legal hacking or something. Growth, growth hacking, the, the background is as follows, okay? This is also where engineers and marketeers work together, and many of the marketeers are actually engineers. Silicon Valley is actually, I think, as Rajiv said, dominated by um, engineers, okay? So, in classical marketing, Procter & Gamble, they will die if they get 5 or 10% growth a year. That's kind of big marketing, you know, 5 to 10%. And if you get 20% in an emerging market, you are a hero, okay? But you also have a stable business model. You've got a stable product and you've got known customers. But if you don't, if you are changing the product all the time, okay, and you want to go from kind of few thousand to few million in a year, so Facebook went from what? Facebook went from one Harvard to three or four Ivy League, you know, Stanford and Yale and two or three or four. And it went from, I think, five or 6,000 to 1 million in a year. So you're not going 20% a, uh, a year. You're going 20% two or three times a day. And whilst you're going two or three times a day, okay, you are continuously tinkering around with the product and the customer. You're getting customer feedback, and you're doing something different. And you're doing customer feedback, doing something different. You're changing the product mix, the solution mix all the time. Okay? So if you're in, and in this world, if you're not fast enough, someone else will take your idea. So guys, if you are into this race, and you want to grow two, three times a day, not a year, not 20% a year, 20% a day, a thousand times a year, and there are companies have done that. They've, you are always finding different ways to piggyback, and you know, um, these guys did it. Um, um, Airbnb did it with Craigslist, the growth hacked into Craigslist. The LinkedIn did it, they did that whole networking effect and all of that kind of stuff. So you have to find your ways of growth hacking where you're continuously tinkering. So the engineer, as they call, you know, someone call it the, uh, every startup has as the hacker, the hipster, and, and, and the hustler, or whatever you call it. The hacker is basically a guy who's tinkering around with the product or the solution. And, and then the, the hipster is the marketeer. And then the hustler is, you know, just driving it. So think hours. If you think, you know, I'll come back for the next class and do something, man, you're like, if you're not in the startup mode, you are in the comfort zone, okay? So you have to think hours and days. The game of startups is hours and days. Today the world is so fast, okay? Let's move on. Uh, by the way, now all of you are highly talented, okay? But for God's sake, do not think that I'm a computer engineering, that's why I'll do a computer startup. I'm an electric engineer, I'll do a VLSI startup. I'm a civil engineer, I'll do some civil startup. Doesn't it doesn't have to be like that. Okay. Choose an area, but where also it, choose areas. Um, let's say, let's just take show of hands. Uh, you guys are in which, which department are you in? Electrical. Electrical. Civil, so good. Electrical, electrical, civil. Civil, so electrical, civil, 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 okay, so we've got, good. So civil doesn't mean you have to do something in prefabs and something, electrical doesn't mean you have to do something on, you know, VLSI design or something, okay, embedded system or something, okay. So you solve a customer problem and chances are you will need some design elements, you'll see, you know, some electronic design, some ergonomic design, you need to do, you know, some, some software analytics on top of it, user interface and so on and so forth, okay. So you'll need um, a hodgepodge of skills to really take the, the product to market. You understand? So I mean, Kamal is doing a, this thing. Uh, um, he's doing a warehousing startup, marketplace for warehousing. He's got an IIT Kanpur guy with him. He's got an I'm Indoor guy with him. And he's got an Indo, indust, um, industry guy with him. And they're all different departments. He's been very smart. So he's got a management guy who's typically strong in strategy and marketing, and he's got the designer, he's got an industry guy, and he's got an IT Kanpur. That guy's from um, aerospace. So where is your you know, mother department, and where is the problem that you're solving? But I would suggest the best fit is, if you go to the next slide, the heart of a start is choose an area, and we'll do an exercise in the next 30 minutes time, two exercises, where your heart is. So if your heart is in a certain area, 
okay? Your dreams, your passions, and your beliefs are in a certain areas. Try to do a startup on that area where the customers have a real need in that area. My father was deaf and blind for almost the last 10 years of your life. So I'm very hot on blinds, you know, anybody who's doing anything for the blind and for the deaf. So my heart and passion is there. So I'm very happy to mentor. I'm too old to start up, but I'm very happy to mentor teams there. So look for your heart, and we're going to do an exercise. We'll help you decide where your heart is, where your passions, and where your dreams are. And choose an area, not based on whether you're computer science or electrical or civil, but try and choose an area where there is a real customer need, and that need, you know, kind of excites you. Okay, so that's the sweet spot that I'm trying to explain. So go back. So how do you find where your heart and you know? So you try, I would recommend that you do a little bit of self-discovery first of all. First of all, you have to learn, understand yourself. Before you go and understand the market and you understand customers, you have to first understand yourself. Okay? And one good way of understanding yourself is to keep defining for yourself. You can read out there, Tom Peters wrote In Search of Excellence. He's a management guru who wrote several books. One of them is In Search of Excellence. One of the things he talked about was my personal brand. Who am I? How do people see me? What do I give and what do I get? All of you will probably will benefit by defining who you are, how do you interact with others, what do you get, what do you give. Okay, and we'll do that exercise. And if you go to the next slide, what Jeff Bezos says was, your personal brand is how people describe you in two or three words when you're not in the room. Oh, oh, that guy. Ah. Sachin Pendulkar, everybody knows what we call him. Right? God of cricket, kind of. Steve Jobs, which we know what we call him. Bill Gates, we know what we call him. Okay? So your personal brand will help you discover yourself. And I'm going to do an exercise just to get you started. This personal branding, this is the first time ever you're going to do it. Okay? We're going to give you a template. Okay? This will be the first. We'll do two assignments very quickly. Okay? The first assignment is in a template form. Just go to the next slide. So this is what we call, um, you will see some of these canvases or templates. Today it's called canvas, used to be called canvases. So there's a business model canvas, and this canvas, marketing canvas, and this canvas. So this is like a more, uh, personal branding template. I request each of you to spend some time, 15 minutes on this, is 6.34, maybe 10, 12 minutes, just to do a first cut of this. And I'll explain how. You don't have to perfect it today. Okay? You can do it later, but I would suggest to keep this as a live document. Okay? And you use this for the rest of your life so that you are very clear yourself, okay, who you are. What is the brand called you? Okay? And it doesn't mean that you have to do anything fraud or inappropriate or anything. You don't have to hire an image consultant, but you just to be honest and authentic and define who you are. Okay, so we'll handle. So if you look at it on the left side, dreams and passions, values and, and, and beliefs, attitudes and skills. You can write down one or two points, top of mind today, for the sake of this exercise. It defines who you really are. The right hand side is how you interact, how you you know behave and interact with others, communicate and commit to others. You know, in, in colloquial language, you know, fekte hai, goli dete hai, is it, are you that kind of, you know, jawan bolte hai to karte hai, jo bolta hai wo karte hai. You know, so how do you communicate, how do you think others see you and then emote and relate? And in the below you get what do you want to give to whom? And you may say, you know, I want to give to society, I want to give to this, I want, and what do you want to get from whom? This will help you discover yourself. This, by the way, will also lead you later on into a business model canvas which is the essence of any canvas. Basically, what do you give to him, and what do, what, what do you want to give to whom, and what do you want to get from whom? Who are your, what's you know, behind you, and what's in front of you? And I think my unique value proposition is two or three or four words is actually a brand proposition. You don't, now, for privacy concerns, and if you, if you, you know, we don't have to see it. You don't have to show it to others, okay? Especially the left part. You don't really have to show it to anybody. Okay? But we will hand you each of you a sheet. I would encourage all of you to use it. If you continue with the course, keep referring back to it. If you want to drop out of the course, keep it for the rest of your lives. 
someday when you're CEOs and CXOs and entrepreneurs, everything, keep it at the back of you, it'll help you. And you may say, I want to be a good father, I want to be family oriented, I want to be a good social citizen, I want to be a rich businessman, I want to be a billionaire. That's fine. It's your, it's your dream, it's your passion. Make sense? Get it? Okay. Once you do that, then we go to the next part, which is team formation. Now, for God's sake, what I don't want is five computer science students, or five, you know, four of you forming a team. Please, please, please. <laughs> don't combine by department. Combine, rally around a common purpose. Go to the next one. So this is a team. Team. So once you have done the, uh, 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 go go back to the next uh, the next one. The next one. Next one. Yes. So this is a team formation. Once you have discovered yourself and found out what are your passions and beliefs and, and, and you know, thoughts, etc., okay, try and form teams around common dreams, a team dream. So you may be civil and he may be electric, civil and electrical, but both of you want to do something for robotics and help certain industries. Fine, that's your dream. I want to be the world's best robot here in the world. Combine. You may be wanting to do something for, you know, drone, you know, the, the, the marketplace for ambulance, which is an INSEAD prize winning this thing, you know. I want to do a marketplace for ambulance. I want to work for the sick. He may be wanting to work for the sick. You combine. Not more than two founders at best three. We don't want, you know, if you have more than two or, you know, three or four, even meeting is a problem. Because five of you will not be able to meet. So, Typically, it's good to have one big founder and maybe a couple of two or three teams. And please have diversity and rally around teams. So what we'll do is, it's um, 8.38 now, till 18, um, 18.50, which is about 12 minutes time, have a shot at the personal branding. Okay? Please fill up at least the central part. Go, go back, if you don't mind. Go back. This is a sheet which is being handed out to you. This is the first assignment. For 12 minutes, just try to fill up at least the dream and passion, because that will help you form teams. And the middle one, what do you think is a value proposition? The rest of it you can fill up later. OK? And we'll give you some folders. And once the teams are formed, then we'll, we'll ask you to put everything into folders, OK? This is an, the first one is an individual exercise till, um, as I said, next 10, 10 to 11 minutes, OK? Take a crack at it. It's difficult. You're doing it for the first time. Okay, but close your eyes and think what your dream is, what your passion is, and you don't have to consult each other. What's your dream? So on top, so if you look at it, it says brand, put your name there, you are the brand, brand me, you are the brand. The left side, guys, is all about inside you, your passions, your beliefs, your dreams, your thoughts, your attitudes. I'm a winner. I hate to lose. I fight. My dream is I want to be the best. I want to be the whatever it is. I want to serve. I want to be remembered like this. Whatever it is. Right side is the external side. How you want, how others probably see you. You may not know how others see you. Are you emotional? Are you logical? Sensitive? Makes you think, huh? Guys, for the right-hand side, you can someday check, go back, and ask your friends, someone who can ask, give you honest opinion. Because you may have a self-image, but others may think differently of you. You know, you may be surprised. It's a good self-discovery tool. All right, guys, um, just for the paucity of time, see, you will not be able to fill this up, but my recommendation to you would be keep this as a live document. It will be there in the sticks that we give you, okay, with all the reading and videos and everything. Keep this as a live document for the rest of your life. You can, format doesn't matter, template doesn't matter, but this is a good use of your being self aware, okay, and, and so on. Now, let's get to the next one, which is team formation because this may take a little bit of time, but I want to make sure that we get some few good teams. How many of you actually have an idea so far? Does anybody have an idea? You have an idea, a year team of one? 
Just you. Anybody else has an idea? Okay, so one, two, three. Do you want to work by yourself, just be a founder, or you want to do, you want to tie up with someone else? Okay, just one thing because we're going to get into some privacy, this thing. Remember, you don't have to disclose, if you're not comfortable disclosing your idea because you're worried someone else will, you know, copy it. If you don't want to disclose anything in those personal branding, okay, please don't disclose it. Okay, because the classroom will have a lot of sharing. It is on you to make sure that you don't disclose anything that can be, someone can take. So just be cautious about that because we want to share. If you believe your idea, you don't want to share your idea, then share, use some other idea for this class, okay? All right, so we have to form some teams. Now, how many, raise your hands, how many of you are on B2B? How many of you would like to work on something on the B2B side? B2B? B2B, okay, anybody knows what's B2B? You are doing something and your customers are likely to be a business, okay? And the rest of you are all on the consumer side. You're trying to do something for consumer side, okay? Now, my recommendation would be, if you are passionate about any areas, then you form teams with those areas. So let's just go around the, the room once, and we'll see if we can create some natural teams of two or three, okay? Um, are you okay? Let's just go around the team once. Top of my idea, you have an idea. I mean, you know, KRNX is, you have an idea? Any, I don't want, we're not looking for an idea. It's too early to form an idea. Okay, we'll talk that in the next class. Which is the area that excites you? Automobiles. Automation, fantastic. Automation. Which area excites you, you're passionate about, you have a dream about? Okay, we'll come back to you. Huh? Travel, travel fitness. Just speak loudly because then you can find natural allies. Education, fantastic. Edutech, fintech. So I think there's some natural coupling. Edtech, fintech, okay. Fitness. So traveling and fitness, traveling fitness. So strike some new friendships, huh? Because don't, you can't have a finger with five hands. And you can't have a startup with five brilliant civil engineers. <laughs> it can be a startup, but you know, it's better to be diverse. It, you can be brilliantly successful, but you know, good to be diverse. Ed tech, ed tech, ed tech, ed tech, um, health, health, okay? Sorry? My apologies? Just speak louder. Teaching, so education, educate, okay? Okay, fantastic. Fashion? Education. Very good. Music. Fantastic. Medicine. Life. Something to... What about you? Manufacturing. E-commerce service. Great. Machine learning. Fantastic. Fintech. Some, something on fintech. Banking. Fintech. Which one? Traveling. traveling. So I think you are you are in, you are interested in traveling. So you can pair up with the lady there. What about you? Traveling and dancing. Traveling and dancing. Pick one. Where is your heart? Where is your passion? Where is your dream? Dance. Okay. Fair enough. Don't think product. Don't think product. Think about where your passion is. We'll then tie you up and then we'll next, next class we'll get into ideation. Rem services, okay? Waste management. What's that? Real estate. Service. Food. Automation, so automation, automation, okay? Social, fantastic. I was looking for that. <laughs> Good, I'm very happy. All right, can we just spend um, two or three minutes because, you know, uh, Professor Raj's class will start now. Just do some natural pairing. See, see if you can just talk and enroll each other. Do you want to tie up with, I'm um, sorry, I don't, not familiar with the names. Do you want to tie up with the gentleman there because both of you are into automation. Automation? Who's on automation? Automation. All right, all the ed tech guys, how many, how many, just raise your hand on ed tech. Ed tech, education technology, one, two, three. One, two, three. Okay. 
one, two, three, four. Okay, one, two, three, four. Civil, civil, what about you? Mac? Electrical, good. So, do you want to form one team or two teams at tech? Yeah, so between the four of you, let's form two teams, okay? Two, two. All right. I suggest you go with electrical and civil go with mechanical, something like that. Don't do too civil, okay? Because remember, you need some diversity. Um, fintech, who's on fintech? Guys, fintech? Fintech, someone else was in banking, right? Someone said banking. Okay, fintech, banking, same. So one, two, three. Can you guys just... Remember, your heart and passion is there. We'll get into ideation in the next class. Okay, we're still not thinking ideas. Um, you are on dancing, so you're alone. You don't want to do travel, right? For the purpose of this class, you don't want to do travel because you'll have a natural partner there. Yes? Yes or no? Traveling here, okay? If, if your heart is not in it, don't do it. But if your heart is there, so you tie up with the lady there. You are on social, right? Anybody else on social? Manufacturing, who's on manufacturing? Manufacturing, two of them. Same department? Different. Okay, so you're not friends and like, so you're just newfound friends. Fantastic. Good. You never know. Some of you guys can come up with an idea and get your first customer in eight weeks' time. I'm hoping some of you guys will get some first customer. Where are, where are you? Music. Anybody else in music? All right, you go for music yourself. That's fine. That's okay. What about you? Medicine, health, so one, one, you? On what? Environment. So would you like to tie up with social and environment? We'll, we'll figure, so you know, will you just tie up with her if you don't mind? You're okay, right, social, good. You're passionate about the environment, social, all right. Who's left, who doesn't have a natural, where are you? Food, fantastic, food, now food, mm. food, okay, so you're on your own then. Anybody else wants any foodies here? Okay. Who's, who doesn't have a natural partner here? Your interest is? Clothing and fashion. Huh? Fashion. Fashion. Huh? Oh, good. So you raise your hand for what? So, yeah, but your interest is? Waste. Would you want to tie up with environment and social? Three of, is that yes or no? Okay. So ladies? Um, and can we just tie up just for the sake of social, environment, environment, waste management, okay? So dance is alone and food is alone, okay? Travel. Machine learning. Machine learning, yeah, fantastic. He's on care and, I mean, you know, he needs a machine learning person. All right, who doesn't have a team? Fitness. Fitness, dancing. Fitness, dancing, I mean, can you, who's dancing? So fitness, fitness, dancing. Huh? No, no, you, you're already tied up. Who wasn't dancing? Someone else wasn't dancing. Who wasn't dancing? As we have tied up on, on, on this thing. All right. Now, can, you, can I just request, just to get, just change your seat very quickly in, in just like a few seconds time and just sit next to each other. Then we'll hand, hand over some things, certain things. All right, guys, just, just change seats a little bit so I know who, who is who. All right, so we just number some of the teams. All right, guys, I'll see you. I, I will see you in the next class. Now it's over to Professor Raja's class. So my class is over next Thursday. We'll meet. Okay? Thank you.